Welcome to the Grit.org podcast with Colby Harris and Brian Harbin. In these episodes, they speak to top achievers in athletics and business to understand the habits and mindset they apply in order to build more grit. Welcome back to the Grit.org podcast. My name's Colby Harris. Alongside me, as always, is Brian Harbin. And we are here with today's guests, Kevin Butler and Jack Foster. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah, super excited to be here today. It's been a, it's been a lovely summer with you fellas, and I, uh, I'm excited to get, get going. Yeah, that it has been. I can't wait to share this story. So Jack and Kevin here have been our two Grit University interns for the duration of summer 2022. Over the past 10 weeks, they have tested their limits mentally, physically, and emotionally while also getting hands-on business experience running Grit Camp, our summer sports camp. During the 10-week program, they follow a rigorous schedule starting with a 6 a.m. workout each day, followed by running camp, building the business in the evenings, and following a reading, meditating, and journaling schedule before bed. So... To kick us off, both Kevin and Jack come from athletic backgrounds and have always loved sports growing up. So to kick us off, can you both share where your passion for sports started and maybe a quick story to showcase why you love sports so much? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Uh, I want to start by thanking our hosts for having both of us on the podcast. Like I I said a little bit earlier, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, But sports have have really shaped me into the person that that I am today. Um, It's startling to think about that something like that can translate um, into the type of man you become. But, um, in truth, my, my love of sports started at a really young age. I played in some really competitive soccer and basketball leagues. Um, and it taught me a lot about failure and how to handle coming up short of a goal. Um, learning that a poor performance in sports of any sort doesn't really affect you as a human being. That lesson took me a while to get, um, a grasp of, uh, I had a lot of emotional outbursts. I, I tied a lot of self-worth into youth sports, which wasn't super healthy. Um, so, but anyway, uh, years and years of practice and playing and, and high stakes, um, events like that. Um, even a couple years of football in there. Um, oh, yeah. I learned how to come. Yeah. You know, come <laughs> on. I can, I can step out there. You saw me at camp. Uh, I learned how to compose myself in, in stressful situations and, um, put the needs of the team above my own. And I really think that that's helped serve me, uh, at great university this year. Cause we are a team, the four of us all year, we've been a team all summer, I should say. And, um, you know, those skills that, uh, I learned from you, the sports really helped. Um, so yeah. So getting into my, uh, my upbringing started out playing T-ball as most kids do, or T-ball or soccer depends. But, um, you know, first grade, I had a very close friend of mine, Jaron Firesheets, also from Mandarin. Um, so we, he was really into football and we'd hang out a lot. He was my best friend growing up. And then I got, I was like, you know what? I want to play football. And I really fell in love with it, you know, playing as like a tiny mite, you know, kindergarten, first grader, all the way till, you know, where I got now into playing in college. Um, That was definitely my first love. And then, you know, later in later in the years, as you get older, started getting into basketball. But a short story I want to share about why sports means so much to me has to be my senior year. I had a great high school football career playing for Ponte Vedra. Um, Only lost about eight or nine games total throughout my high school career. Um, But, you know, senior year, like for every athlete, is definitely like that most special year. And I just remember one moment um, where it really like full scale hit me was sitting there on the field after our last game was a playoff game versus Columbia High School. Pouring rain, you know, can't really throw the ball that well ground and pound we got to do new schemes that we had never done before like I did tackle over so I was on the left side with the other left with the other tackle and we would run a like gap scheme like power counter that sort of stuff and um it just really hit me like we were sitting on that field after that tough loss you know balling our eyes out because we knew it was over and just like there was a there was a moment that we captured the photographer took a picture of like all all the seniors just sitting on center field, like right on the shark logo, just like sitting around like a campfire. And it's, it's a beautiful shot. The rain's like pouring down, you see the rain and we're all just like sitting there. And all we did was, you know, just sit there and, and talk, you know, just talk like, like brothers. So the biggest, you know, thing from sports for me is the camaraderie that you build and the relationships that you build. 
And, you know, I'll talk more about relationships and whatnot as we get deeper into the podcast. But that is the best that is the best part of sports is the bonds you form. Hmm. And I think it's really cool at that age, too, because in your early years, it is so much about personal development and outside of sports, you know, just being in school and your extracurricular activities. It is just about yourself. So to be on a team through those years and be a part of something that's not only bigger than yourself, but in competition with those guys by your side uh, for something that is for the collective betterment of the team is just so amazing. And Jack, coming over to you, you're currently enrolled at Florida State University. You graduated from Ponte Vedra High School just a few minutes south of Jacksonville, but I know you've not always been in Florida and actually spent most of your time growing up in Massachusetts. So can you share us a little bit about your transition to Florida and the things you learned during that time relocating about midway through high school? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I I moved at 16, which is always going to be a difficult age. I feel like no matter who you are, um, it's a tough time to uproot your life. Um, But to sort of pile onto that, uh, Massachusetts was really the only home I had ever known, um, you know, and moving to Florida from a town with, you know, 20,000 people in it, it was quite a culture shock. You know, I had spent, um, like Colby said, basically my entire adolescent life there. Um, but the most important thing I took away from those, those first couple years where I wasn't super comfortable in my surroundings just yet is that, you know, um, tumultuous time can bring about a change in worldview. And I think that I have never evolved more in a single year of time than my first year in a new place. And it was sort of a very similar to how we did it at great university. I'm sure Kevin and I will get into yeah. the trial by fire method that we had here. Um, but that's sort of what it was for me is when I was thrown into this new setting with a bunch of new faces, new people, new agendas, new everything, I had to learn to, you know, be my most natural self in a new environment. And I was really gun shy when we first got started. I spent, you know, the first year, um, you know, sort of regretting the move and like being upset that all my friends were behind and, you know, using my phone to stay connected with people in Massachusetts rather than, you know, move on to people who were in my surroundings now. I was sort of trying to grasp onto those relationships that had held so much value in my life for years. Um, but uh, once I was able to sort of move past that, you know, it, it's, I found out that it's definitely a possibility to hold on to new relationships, you know, make new friends and keep the old. And that was something that I was um, really focused on after that first year. But once I sort of shed that shell of nerves and, you know, just fish out of water, feeling a little uncomfortable, all that sort of stuff, um, I enjoyed life in in Ponte Vedra a lot more. You know, I met a a lot of new friends, including one sitting across the table right here. We we met senior year, had a a blast ever since. And um, I don't know, there was a lot of fear. And looking back on it now, I think there's the the number one thing I regret is, is taking too long to step outside of myself and learn more about the area that I was in. Um, And I know, you know, Grit University, um, I didn't really have that problem because I had already learned. I feel like I immersed myself into what this, uh, what your guys' culture was pretty instantaneously. And um, that, that's a lesson that I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. Hmm. Yeah. And then Kevin, yeah, you on the other hand, you know, you've always grown up in the greater Jacksonville area. You mentioned Mandarin earlier and then moved to Ponte Vedra for middle school and high school. So what were some of the positive negatives or what was it like kind of laying your roots here in Jacksonville? Yeah. So in all honesty, you know, Jack and I are com- complete opposites of that upbringing, you know, being up upscale rooted across the country. Um, but we have similar flaws. Um, I sh- I had a hard time making connections growing up. Like I, I had friends, I was friendly, I had school friends, I had football friends, but it was very, it was very hard for me to have that like tight knit social circle, um, because to me that was like that was like what family was. Um, but it wasn't really until I met Jack senior year that I really started to like, you know, form that social circle. And uh, I'd say I'd say the biggest positive of being in one area for so long is um, being so comfortable in my environment that I was never scared to like try new things. Um, you know, whether that be playing, doing track, I'd never touched a shot put or or anything. But you know, junior year, I was like, why not do track? One of my friends talked me into it, and it was a great decision. I loved track. Um, shout out, Coach Guile. Um, you know, just like being able to try new things was definitely um, the biggest plus 
of having my roots here. And you were a shot put record holder by yes. the time you graduated, which well, is fantastic. Well, well I don't, don't even get into that. It's already been broken. It's already been broken. <laughs> the the guys say, this I, year, they, bro- they broke the record. I like was going to say you times. had it to this day. Good thing I didn't say that. I yeah. didn't know it was freshly <laughs> broken and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you're, you got your glory there for a minute. Yeah. But I do love both perspectives of, you know, having a safety net of somewhere you're comfortable and then having a lack of a safety net and the things that you learn of being able to step out, whether it's because you feel like you have to or you feel like you want to. Right. Uh, so I, being someone that moved in sixth grade, another very ripe age, I can definitely understand Jack's perspective. But now that I've spent the last better eight years in Fernandina, I feel like uh, the world is in the palm of my hands up there. So I can definitely understand that. And moving into the high school years for you both, as mentioned, you both graduated from Ponte Vedra High School and played sports there, became friends there as well. What are some of the lessons or values that your coaches instilled in you or, frankly, fared, failed to instill in you during that time that you played? And how did those really help shape who you are today? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into, you know, Kevin's high school glory. Um, he, had a, he had a lot of fun over there at the PV football program. But I, on the other hand, uh, I was always a basketball player. Actually, I was sort of um, I was sort of off the mark from the get-go because in Florida – my two main sports, which were soccer and basketball, all the way up until I moved, uh, are actually played during the same season. Um, so I sort of had to make a choice going into my sophomore year whether I wanted to pursue soccer or basketball. And um, my dad always joked around with me saying that I was a much better soccer player than I was a basketball player. But I always had a fire and a passion for basketball. So for me, it was a no-brainer choice. I chose basketball almost instantly. Um, and, um, you know, unfortunately, by the time my senior year rolled around, um, the program didn't, didn't select me to come back for, for varsity. And that was probably the most pain I felt um, in a long time that I can remember. I was very broken up about it. I, um, because I, I, I really valued my ability to play basketball, and I really thought that I could contribute to a winning season for Ponte Vedra, which they didn't end up having that year. Um, so I was really upset about that, but the, uh, coach, the, the coaching staff over there really did teach me something inadvertently by making that decision, and um, that lesson was definitely that you need to have confidence in your own abilities regardless of you know outside perspective. So you know these coaches may not have thought that I was ready to play or that I could have helped as much as the next guy or whatever it is, but... Um, that that upset feeling that I felt after not um, you know being placed on that team brought me to the conclusion that okay I know that I'm good at what I do I know that I've been doing this since I you know was old enough to hold a basketball and and reach the ten foot hoop and all that stuff I know that I'm good at this and um, you know just because other people don't see it or choose not to see it whatever it is it doesn't mean that you know um, I'm worth any less or I'm a worse person or any sort of that stuff. Um, some of those negative thoughts that come creeping into your head when, when failure is about. So um, I still love basketball. It didn't, didn't change my passion for the sport in any way. Um, I was upset about it, as I said, but I really feel that I'm a lot more confident in my abilities, not just on the court, but elsewhere, um, because, you know, the, the opinions of others only matter to a certain degree. You know, the, the opinion that matters most of all is your own, of yourself, and that's something that, you know, every one of us has to come to know. And I was fortunate um, early on in life, just about my senior year of high school, to, to find that out for myself. So, you want to talk about that uh, AAU stint after that? Uh, well, you know, that those were that's just actually some of the most fun I've ever had on a basketball court. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll, I, that's not really appropriate for this podcast. I would say we have a lot of stories we could tell about that for sure. But uh, I'll let uh, I'll let Kevin get into uh, to the football glory days. So you know the lessons. Um, that my coach has instilled in me, it really comes full circle because a lot of it ties into the grit creed. We had Adam Silva come speak, and he was he was definitely a big factor in those formative years. Um, like, you know, pregame meal, Adam Silva's coming to speak to us. You know, and he always he always preached the, the three steps to being a man built for others. And, you know, the kid the kids at camp got to got to hear that. Um, relationships, building relationships being able to give love and receive love transcendent cause cause greater than self just like our great creed um and then having a code of conduct discipline hard work and you know i i think what's what's nice about those lessons that were instilled is i really got ahead of the curve you know not a lot of high school athletes get that that um that mental performance and that that you know that foundation for for a future and it really helped helped me along into my college years, and you know, 
we would also do some some reading during the summer during like summer camp for football you know one of the ones we read was uh how to make your bed in the morning like in the little things um awesome awesome experience being able to um do that with people around me like i said once like i said earlier in the podcast like it's about relationships and so going through and being with those guys every day at football and learning the same things and kind of having that entourage of we have the same mentality we have the same uh, purpose it translates to what we did here this summer and i think that's uh it's that's awesome like translating you know things from the sports world to to now to the business world and i was going to say that you know being great university interns it's we're sort of like the entourage who has a similar goal yep, right it's exactly. the same thing it's really cool must have went hand in glove with what we did this summer it's definitely cool to to experience adam silva firsthand i'm sure brian you could agree we can only imagine what that would have been like to have him in our corner five six days a week in high school playing sports uh adam silva anyone who's watching or listening give him a google listen to a few of his speeches but i was fully blown away and the things he's developed into you and other people are truly incredible and you're completely right if he put you way above the curve of what was to come in the future oh yeah for sure and and uh, and so upon graduation, I know, you know, Jack, obviously you decided to go to Florida State where now you're pursuing and you're going to be able to get your business degree, undergraduate and your master's degree, uh, your MBA four years. Um, in four years. And then Kevin decided to uh, continue his football career and play division one football at Stetson University and played offensive line for the last couple of years. So tell us a little bit more about that decision to continue to play football uh, through college. So I continued to play because that was my cause greater than self. That was my purpose. Uh, being dedicated to a team, working out every day, practicing, learning the offense, everything that you contribute to the success of a team was because of the foundation I laid through sports, you know, in my formative years in high school. And I really thought being a division one athlete was the best way to set myself up for success. And like I said, it comes back to relationships, the first step in those, in being a man built for others, building those relationships with my college teammates. And now I have, even though I've decided to kind of walk away and we'll get into that more, um, having that network and those relationships was super important to me. And um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's what it's, that's what sports are about is, is relationships. Yeah, and I think it was really healthy for you to see that for yourself, to, to reach that dream. I think every kid that plays sports envisions themselves playing Division One one day, whether that happens or not, and few people actually get to see that come into fruition, and I think that's something you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. But coming into more present day, obviously you both have been great university interns for summer 2022. Diving right into that, why don't we start with both of you just sharing a bit, a bit about how you found out about us and really why you wanted to pursue the opportunity of being a great university intern. So funny enough, Colby and I have known each other since around what, sixth grade? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. And, uh, you know, I saw what he had been doing for the last two summers. We, you know, we lost touch for a while. Uh, I saw what he'd been doing on social media and I reached out to him in what, like August of last year? 2021, that's right. Um, and I was like, hey, this is something I'd be interested in doing. Like, tell me more, tell me more. And then, funny enough, you guys start your recruiting in February and March to get um, interns. And I was like, oh, this, this is an opportunity that I want to partake in. And then, you know, we started the interview process. I was, I was falling in love with what you guys were doing. And um, then, you know, I got, you know, I was like, yo, Jack, like, this is something you need to do too. So roped him into it and, you know, I wanted to do something like this because this was about becoming a better me, like the best version of myself. And, you know, there's no other opportunity to do it physically, no better opportunity to do it physically, mentally, and emotionally than here at Grant University. Hmm. Yeah, it's really funny that he that he mentioned roping me in um, because, you know, during that, that interview process time, uh, I was actually deciding, um, you know, what route I wanted to take in terms of an internship. Um, I had had a lot of uh, places where I had sent an application in and a couple more where I was thinking about sending in one in and I had narrowed my options down to like a final two or three, you know, traditional run in the mill 
um, internships when I get a call, a, a very impassioned call, a very, very passionate call from um, Kevin Butler over here. And, um, you know, at this time, you know, when I first heard him talk my ear off about it, I had no idea what GRIT stood for. I didn't know, was it an acronym? I didn't know what we were doing. I knew nothing about it. But Kevin suggested that I really take the time to read into everything, all the um, information that's online, everything about GRIT and the mission statement and all that sort of stuff. And my trust in Kevin, uh, coupled with the passion that he definitely had for what you guys were doing, caused me to sort of um, put all my other potential internships on the back burner and give this GRIT my full time of day. And uh, man, I'm, I really could not be more fortunate than to have done that because I, I, um, all the stuff that you guys have in terms of, like Kevin said, the mental, physical, and emotional sort of growth is something that every single internship that I had on my desk did not offer. Um, you know, obviously the business experience is something that is integral to college and, you know, me trying to get my degree and everything, but great university took that and stacked multiple chips on top of it in order to make this probably one of the most enriching summers I've had. Um, so I was, uh, Kevin told me all about the physical commitment, you know, the, the, the morning lifts, the, the journaling, all the mental stuff. And, um, I really, I probably had a day or two's worth of hesitation before I was like, look, mom and dad, like, this is what I'm doing. Like I'm staying in Florida this summer because, um, we'll get into it a little bit more later, but my parents moved this summer. So I was here in Florida, um, full-time great university intern while my parents moved across the country without me. So, um, that's another wrinkle that, um, sort of speaks to my passion for grit university and all that they had going on because I was able to sort of delay my move to another part of the country with my family, um, to sort of give my full, um, effort to, to these guys and everything that they have going on. Um, so I knew that, you know, everything, um, with everything that I had read and talked about in the interviews with Brian and Colby here, I knew that, it, uh, everything that we were going to do is going to be far from easy. Um, I knew that it, it would take a lot of work, um, but I just saw that all the rewards and, uh, you know, potential good things that could come of this. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, all of these positive uh, outcomes and I still get college credit like that, that just, it just sort of became an afterthought at that point because of all the, you know, things that had been laid in front of me in terms of, you know, if you put in this amount of effort for 10 weeks, this is what you're going to get on the other side. And now that we're on that other side, I can safely say that I've basically achieved every single one um, of those, those rewards. So, um, couple that with the great goal of grit camp and grit university and, you know, making every person better for having come through uh, our summer camp that we ran. And I was all in, I pushed in all my chips. Um, so I'm really glad that I found it in the way that I did. And I was, um, I'm really glad to have spent this amount of time with you guys, um, because grit university, um, it was a blessing for the, for the stuff that I needed to get done this summer. Hmm. Well, we definitely, Colby and I interviewed a lot of people to find you guys. I mean, it was definitely a few dozen people. And so, but we knew you guys were our top two and that's who we wanted to run with. Obviously, Grit University is only so big. So we had room for two and you guys were the two we chose. And, um, but, you know, and you guys started that week one was the end of May. And so tell us about kind of initial reactions, you know, drink it from a fire hose that first uh, that first week. Tell us a little bit about your initial reactions. Yeah, well, so you know what's funny? I didn't know that there were a large amount of other candidates in consideration. That was something I, I just learned right now. But uh, I appreciate that we were the top prospects. That, that means a lot to, to both of us, I could say. We're both very proud to, <laughs> to have that under our belts. But uh, I don't know. I mean, my first reactions, none of them were really negative. Um, that's something that I'm going to get into when we talk about, you know, if, if we get to what future uh, grid interns should do when they first arrive. Uh, I, sort of, I sort of suppressed all sort of thoughts of negativity. Um, and I just really thought that, you know, if I, if I give my full effort here and now, what I experience down the road will be all the more better. Um, you know, sacrifice now leads to benefit in the future, that sort of thing. Um, and so really my only, my, my, my real only apprehension when we first got to HQ was HQ itself, because I've never had more than one roommate in my life. I've never had to live with more than one person. So I was like, you know, three guys, you know, one guy I don't really know all that well, you know, we're all sharing this house, you know, it's like, how's this going to work? But it worked really, really well. Swimmingly, I had zero complaints, you know, no landlord complaints, nothing. Everything was great. It was smooth living for sure. Um, and then honestly, um, I want to talk about fear a little bit more because I did, I did have a little bit of fear when we first um, started and um, a lot of that sort of originated in the workout room. Uh, I haven't really been on an, inti an intense workout schedule um, in terms of lifting weights since um, maybe late high school years. Um, but um, 
these two interns who who were a part of that workout regimen with me really really helped me see that it you know it's not about how strong I am now it's about how how strong I'm gonna be at the end of all this when when I've put the work in um, and all that sort of stuff so um, you know besides uh, the the little bit of fear of the workout room slight fear not, nothing too bad but um, and then you know HQ being what it was um, I really had no no apprehensions during the first week. Um, I'm sure Kevin will talk about the trial by fire uh, of the sales sort of uh, and business aspect of this, but I loved it. Um, we uh, the first week again there was a little bit of fear there, but uh, again having these guys beside me made it um, a lot more easy to conquer. Um, so the first week was really smooth, and that really led to the next seven or eight weeks being really smooth as well. Yeah, so I mean we're on complete opposite sides of the spectrum on this one. I was extremely nervous you know but you guys you guys threw us into the fire i mean day two we're doing door-to-door sales pitches and god let me tell you colby i never felt so useless in my life <laughs> i mean we were just standing there like your bodyguards even the, the you know the the art studio that ended up you know doing a corporate sponsorship was like you know made a joke about it like what are these two doing here they just like what are they what are they doing we were security but yeah, yeah we were we security <laughs> but I mean, you did a great job showing us the reins and kind of like how it's done. Um, I was so overwhelmed, but at the same time, I was extremely determined to learn and to grow. And and I don't know if it's the competitive nature that sports has instilled into me, but, you know, things like that, like really set us up for an amazing summer. Yeah, definitely agree. And I'll never forget really going out that first day either because I've been doing the corporate sponsorship sales for a, a whole summer now, a whole summer in 2021. I was doing it all alone and it was my first go at it. And I only closed a, a number of sponsors that first day when we locked up that first sponsorship sponsorship in San Marco Square. It got me excited because not only did we score the sponsor, but it gave you guys an opportunity to see it and that it works and that what we were teaching you guys wasn't cut and dry sales it was we're building relationships we're promoting what we're doing and if people enjoyed enough to want to get involved then amazing and that's really what we got that day is they loved everything we were doing and they wanted to help further our mission uh and another thing i think that's so important is just as you guys are saying is we're throwing you into it you know a lot of people talk about investing in employees and i think what brian's been so good about that he's taught me mainly is it's more about enriching and I think if I would have just tried to teach you guys this stuff rather than go out and have you right next to me doing it, it's a lot more of an enriching experience. So for sure, uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that because that was definitely one of the highlights of my summer was locking in that first sale with both you guys by my side. So um, we really wanted to hit the ground running, just like we're talking about the sponsorship sales. That was a really, really big task our first few weeks because as those of you who are listening that may not know, we actually sell corporate sponsors to help send underprivileged kids at Jacksonville into our summer camp. Jack, I know you were really excited for the sales experience. So from your perspective, what have been some of the key challenges and takeaways from your first time working in more of a sales environment? Yeah, I would say I kind of alluded to it um, uh, earlier on, but I would say that, uh, you know, the cop-out answer is is fear. Um, but um, I think that any negativity that comes from uh, sales experience, like the type that we had, um, it really comes from like an inability to try if, if you give full effort um, towards any sort of sales-oriented mission, um, you know, if you're diligent in how you prepare, if you know and love what, what it is you're procuring, all that sort of stuff, um, it makes the whole sales process a lot simpler. And the only failure that comes with that is a failure to give that full effort. Um, and I felt that, um, you know, I didn't really see that when we first got started, um, especially doing the door-to-door sales that um, Colby mentioned earlier. Um, but I think that when you have a, the passion that Colby had and that by, um, you know, sort of extension, Kevin and I came to have as we got later into the summer, um, the camp and the corporate sponsorships by um, extension, again, they sell themselves because we, we believe in what we're doing. We've seen, you know, the benefits that these sponsorships have to the people who receive them um, and all that sort of stuff. So um, it just it really taught me that that pride and passion in, in the product that you provide, wow, that was alliteration, how about that, um, is, uh, is there's, no, there's no substitute for it. You need it um, to, in order to be your most effective. Um, another quick takeaway that I, that I really wanted to add on um, since we're talking about this sort of subject is, um, you know, there, there's, there's no substitute for, um, for getting over fear. You know, fear is always going to be there in some, some form or fashion, um, but you really have to overcome it. Um, 
I think Kevin and I can both agree that we were we were pretty startled um, during that first day, the door to door thing, which is <laughs> it was also, it was honestly good that we were silent, uh, you know, as much as we might have wanted to, to chirp up and help out a little bit. Um, it was probably good that we that we sort of uh, were more observant rather than helping to participate because I think we both had a great deal of deal of fear back then, but um, overcoming that fear is one of the best feelings you're ever going to feel because when Kevin and I, I'm sure I can say that when we both made our first um, sponsorship sales on our own, um, we felt over the moon because we came to the conclusion ourselves. You know, we 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 determined that not only should we not be afraid of this, but we can do it ourselves. And uh, it was a great feeling. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it definitely was considering the the hoots and hollers I heard throughout Grit Headquarters <laughs> when we first had those sales. I remember the first week, I just hear you guys like simultaneously in opposite rooms start screaming and getting excited. I'm like, I know what that means. We're, we're locked in. <laughs> we got one. Uh, and I think it's really cool to, to talk about the, the point of passion because that first week of training was our week before our first week at camp. Yeah. And the number one thing that I told you guys, because from where you started, you guys were already doing so good to have never spent a day at grit camp. And me and Brian both just kept harping to you guys that, look, it might feel weird now, but once you do that first week at grit camp, you guys are going to grasp this thing like never before. And you're going to fully understand. You're going to be able to sell it with your eyes closed because you're going to love it so much. Um, and I think that's really how we hit it so well that first week in June was after you guys experienced camp at that point it was full on, you know, great university for the summer, great camp. And you guys were pretty locked in from there. So Kevin, on the topic of sales, we had one really big meeting this summer as we sat down with the CEO of a large distributing company here in Jacksonville. So the week leading into the meeting, we're doing run throughs. We're trying to really orchestrate how we want to come into the pitch, very professional while also getting our point across and, and letting them know what sets grit camp apart. So from there, we're about 24 hours out from the big meeting, and then we had a, a slight curveball. So, Kevin, can you tell us a little bit more about that meeting and, and how you and Jack really rose to the occasion to make one of the biggest sales of the summer? Yeah, so, I mean, Brian sets us up a meeting with a big company, and we're all practicing throughout the week, and, you know, we just get off a day at camp. I believe it was a Wednesday. You know, we just get off, you know, probably the hardest day at camp. You got CrossFit that morning, the whole, the whole shebang. And then Brian sends us a text. He's like, we have a pitch with Costa One in an hour. Uh, he's not going to be able to make it tomorrow, so we're just going to do it now. And, you know, then we're running around, like, looking at each other, big googly eyes, like, chicken, the whole deal, chicken with your head cut off. And we're just like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? And then, so we're getting ready, practice our lines a few more times, and then, you know, we head over it and head over, and you can just, like, feel the nerves from Jack and I. You you know you stayed cool calm and collect or calm, yeah, cool calm and collected, but you know we get there and you know it was like like butter like we killed it. Um, it it felt so good to be like in that uncomfortable situation and rise to the occasion. You know there's that and that's what sports are about too, and it's and it's it's fascinating how it all just comes full circle again with you know you know tying a summer sports camp to the business world and how it's it's a cycle and they all connect and oh my gosh it was it was such a thrill to do that meeting it was a, a good team win i think we needed that too as the three interns together well, coming back to the house and being able to all high five and get excited and <laughs> yeah. just know that we nailed it you know i think that really gelled us for the summer of like hey man we, we make a good team here I, I experienced one of the uh, largest adrenaline rushes of my life after that. Oh my <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm being honest here. I was yeah, that, I was ready to bounce off the walls. I was ready to do CrossFit all over again after that one. It was yeah, it walk was great. back to the car, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, I was gonna say walking back to the car. You guys were like little kids. Um, it was fantastic. It was like and Sam had come to come early or something. It was great. You know, and and one of the things with the Grit University experience that we try and create is, you know, I'm trying to pack you know, 25 years of life and business and entrepreneur experience into 10 weeks for you guys to, you know, really put you, you know, very far ahead of other people your age. And a big part of that is, you know, pushing you to your limits mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, getting up early, which, you know, 550 for a college student is totally off your usual routine, taking cold showers, working out physically, you're exhausted, mentally and emotionally dealing with, you know, kids, which you're not used to, you know, reading sales, totally out of your comfort zone, get a little bit of recovery on the weekend, which is helpful. But 
the idea is to push you to your limits to see how you're going to respond when things matter most. And so, but there comes a point where a lot of times you reach a tipping point and, and, you know, we told you guys beginning of the summer, at some point it could happen first day, first week, third week, at some point you're going to hit a wall. And we try and create a crutch for you to fall back on with a great creative, like, look, these are the 12 principles that when things get hard, this is what you can rely on. But for both your personal experiences, do you feel like either one of you hit a wall during the summer? You know, I mean, first couple of weeks I had some minor things like I sprained my ankle, whatever, not a big deal stuff I'm used to because of football, but I, I really want to harp on, you know, I never really felt like I hit that wall mentally. And a big part of that was this guy sitting across, across the, the table. Like this, this guy's going to be the best man at my wedding. Like I can't, I, I can't stress enough how important it was that he was here. And that's why I wanted him. That's why I wanted him to, you know, take this journey with me so bad is because there's a balance. Like we are very similar, but we also have our differences and that's what kept us level headed. When he would get high stress moments, I'm like, dude, big picture, take a step back, calm your nerves. And when I'd get worked up, it's the same thing. And I think, I think it just, the, the friendship we have got stronger because of the adversity we went through together. And you know, man, I couldn't be more happy that you're here with me, so. Thank you for all that. Um, I'm not that great a guy, I promise. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but right. um, it is it is great to have a brother in the trenches. Um, I think that that that's that stands true for almost every um, you know piece of adversity that you face throughout your life. Having someone who you trust and you know believes in you, you know by your side, um, is is really big. Um, but again, um, you know, one thing that I do want to talk about with Great University is the camaraderie that Kevin brought up from football. I really feel that I've experienced this. Um, you know, I was a total stranger to Colby when I walked in here, um, you know, in early May. And, um, you know, I, I think that um, not only, like Kevin said, has it strengthened my friendship with Kevin, but it has also helped me grow a new friendship with, with Colby because I've gotten to know him really well through all of the stuff that we've had to go through together. And um, I just think that that's really, really special because, you know, the difficulty that we faced, all three of us, um, in a weird way, it made us made us closer, which which is something that I did not expect. Because, like I said, I talked about a, a, a large amount of rewards at the end of the summer, and one thing that I wouldn't have um, predicted is is a strength, a stronger friendship. Um, so that's really cool. Another thing that helped me, I do want to say, I didn't hit the wall either. I, I, I heard of a wall that was coming. I, it had been told to me like a legend or a myth. You know, I was like, when's the wall going to hit? I'm ready. I just, I thought like my whole body would go numb or something terrible would happen. Um, but no wall came. And I think that, like I said, you know, having people next to me um, who really, you know, helped prop me up and hold me up um, really made, really staved off the, the dreaded wall. Um, but another thing for me would have to be music. Um, I'm a very music oriented person. Uh, I have songs for every mood and emotion and occasion, um, you know, on mornings where it would be really difficult for me to get up at 545, um, you know, where I was dreading getting yelled at by our CrossFit trainer, you know, all those sorts of mornings. I would, I would, tur <laughs> I would turn on the Bluetooth speaker from my phone and I would, I would get the morning started with a banger. Um, and just really get me get me in the right headspace to attack the day, um, you know. And then at the end of camp, similar thing, you know. The kids drive you insane. You really feel like you need to wind your mind down. You know, you play something a little slower, maybe a little yacht rock, something like that, just to sort of calm you down a little bit. Um, so, you know, I think that those are probably the two biggest things. I would say that uh, I think Kevin and I might be understating how difficult it really was at times because it wasn't all you know peaches and roses. It did get hard. Um, but, you know, I think having each other and then having ways where we can, um, you know, sort of wind down and, and relax a little bit um, during those tough days uh, was huge because, um, you know, these days were, were 10 to 12 hours at times, you know, where we were just dialed in the whole day. So um, it's really key to have stuff like that. Um, but I think that uh, Kevin and I will both agree that we helped each other defend against the big wall, the dreaded <laughs> wall. So very cool. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I could not agree more with with all of those statements from both of you of battling the wall. And I did this program alone in, in 2021. And as Brian said, you know, we went through a lot of prospects and something we really discussed is the desire and you have to have that desire. And we had that in both of you guys. I think that was a huge part of you guys getting it. Um, but from my perspective, I can tell you guys right now and even for our listeners of 
this has been a whole new experience for me of having you guys at the house. I mean, even if we were butting heads at camp and we could all get in the car and kind of cut up about the day and the campers and what we needed to do for the afternoon. And sometimes, as you guys know, I get a little, little hot headed. Uh, so to be able to let loose, it really helped me because usually I'm a little bit more of an independent person, keep it to myself. So to be able to come back to the house with the other interns and to kind of let things off our chest from the day, from camp, our stress levels, I felt so much better than I felt in years past of kind of bottling it up to be able to let it out in a similar experience with you guys who are going through the same thing, really collaborate and work through it together. You guys definitely made that a lot easier for me, and I'm glad you guys felt the same way about having me there and Kevin and Jack just uh, this little triangle going on here. Uh, so definitely. nonetheless, Grit Camp is our business, and that's what you both participate in and helped operate for the summer. We spent a lot of the time this summer developing the next generation, you know, playing sports with them, really trying to push them into absorbing our great creed, bringing out these speakers to enrich their lives as well. And although you both come from sports backgrounds, you likely never spent this much time and over such a long period with kids. So from spending time with the kids as well as managing counselors, what are some of the things you've learned this summer that you believe are directly applicable to life and business in the future? Yeah, this, this is a great question. Um, really, really lengthy one. Um, but the, the entire ordeal, um, you know, in terms of, of translatable skills that I acquired would have to be patience. And that was something that I feel like I definitely struggled with. I have a little sister. Um, she could tell that I. She could tell you all about how I don't have any patience. Um, but uh, you have to be able to choose your battles um, in life, and especially with kids, you know, who are looking to have fun at a summer camp. Um, it's even more so. But if you lose your temper, you know, for every little mishap, every little you know mistake, every little you know token of disrespect that the kids probably unknowingly bestow upon you, sort of stuff like that. If you really get mad at all those occasions, the kids will tune you out. Um, you know, the, you, you lose that authority that you've been trying to covet, um, which is sort of counterintuitive, but that's just sort of how it ended up working. Um, and it's similar to the counselors who we manage to a degree. Um, they're obviously a lot better because they're, they're sophisticated people. Um, but patience is, is definitely key and choosing when to, you know, go full force, full passion, um, in order to get the kids to where you want them to be is, uh, is something that's definitely tested when you're running a summer camp. Um, like we were. And another, another transferable uh, nugget of knowledge that I had um, would have to be the ability to accept flaws in a plan. Um, so I think in life, no matter where you are, you're making plans. I think that's what we as people do day in and day out. We make plans for our day, our kids' days, you know, our lives, all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, plenty of those visions that we had, you know, definitely have cracks in them and can definitely fall through or not work the way that we intended them to work, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I had to realize that because um, I'm very plan oriented. I like I like to I like a system of how things are done. Um, but you know, sometimes the kids can't do a drill that you that you created for them because you know they don't have the skill level or the the desire, all that sort of stuff. So so learning that the perfect plan is to have a plan that's adaptable and something that you can change on the fly, um, you know, and still make it fun um, is is something that I learned that um, I think will serve me throughout all other walks of life because you know when you have a vision and it falls through how do you respond and that's that's something that every person needs to be comfortable with yeah um my largest takeaway was learning how to manage people you know whether it be the counselors or the kids um you know starting off with mr ford um that kid was super competitive and you know i just tell him you know here's the sit-up record you going to beat it? And then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. And then, you know, sure enough, he goes and does 400 sit-ups. And then there's kids like Tyler or, or you know, Jalen that are motivated by reward. Like, you know, hey, if you do if you do a 12-minute plank, even your son, Max, 12-minute plank. And I was like, I'll give, if you do 12 minutes, I'll give you, a, you know, whatever candy you want. And then, you know, get him an air, a, you know, a bag of Airhead Extremes or whatever. <laughs> and then... You know, but just like learning how to, like how people work and how they operate and what motivates them is really important. Like just knowing your people, knowing your people is important. And, you know, on the counselor side of things, um, just knowing who's good at what and who can do what, who has the ability to do what, knowing their strengths um, was also like a big, a big, a big thing that I learned this summer. Yeah, and on that note of 
you know, connecting with people and knowing your people. I think de delegating is a huge part, even amongst the, the four of us here, we're all definitely good at certain things. And we learned that and hold memories with us of these campers and their kind of nuances and the things they do. So on that topic of, of understanding these kids and knowing them so well at the end of these eight weeks, what has it meant for both of you to become so well connected with our campers, not to mention our counselors as well, and to really be able to see their growth throughout their time at Great Camp? Yeah, so what it what it's meant for me is, um, you know, being a better big brother. Like you, my brothers are around the same age as the older kids that come to camp. You know, going right going into high school or like finishing up that middle school time, and you know, seeing other kids with in similar situations. You know, you know, not knowing what's next, and I. I kind of felt like that was one of my downfalls growing up was not having that relationship with my brother. Like I always thought he was annoying and, you know, he was just bothersome. But, you know, as he's getting older, like he's going through the same struggles that I went through, whether I was blind seeing it then or didn't remember because I was, I don't remember that younger time in my life, but like he's on his trek to high school. So what it meant for me was seeing kids in that same place and you know you know like we talked about that trickle down like you know us to the counselors to the juco's to the older kids then you know feeding into the younger kids it all translates so if i can if i can teach you know a 13 14 year old kid how to how to do this and and how to you know become a great high school athlete or how to um fit in socially and how to operate themselves in high school and, and, you know, what to expect and what to be nervous about, what not to be nervous about, what matters, what doesn't. Um, it was just, it was just really important to me because it made me like sit back and think like, you know, if I can do this for a kid that, you know, I just met, why can't, why can't I be that for my brother? So being at camp, being around kids all day, like Eli, Jackson, Zion, all, all have potential to be great athletes. Zion could be a great football player. Eli could be a great football player. And just being around those kids that I don't know and then going back home every weekend and seeing my brother, it's like, well, why can't I do that for him? Why, why has that been lacking? So it really was a focal point of, like, of growth and focusing on relationships. It does, you know, relationships include all relationships, familial, platonic, significant others. Like, it, it you know... So focus on being able to give love to my brother was definitely a huge, huge deal and something I realized dealing with campers every day. Mm. Yeah, I, I kind of have a quick aside for this. Uh, I know Kevin and I both have experiences similar to this, but for me, um, sort of one shining example of how you know, you're able to impact someone else's life without even really knowing it is um, we had one sponsored camper uh, who was with us for a number of weeks this summer, uh, and her name was Shireen. Um, she was one of the more shy campers who I'd really ever dealt with. I have some uh, camp experience prior to Grit University, and I've never seen a camper as shy as, as she was. It was really difficult for her to string more than three or four words together um, when she first arrived at camp. And I understand she had been to camp maybe a year prior, uh, maybe two years. Um, and from the scouting report that I got, it was the same. You know, she's very quiet, very introverted, didn't really say much, looked uncomfortable at times, all that sort of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, she was, she was placed into my group for the majority of the weeks that she was here. And, you know, the more and more FaceTime I got with her, the more and more I tried to connect with her and make her feel like a part of the grit camp team. Um, and not so much, you know, not so isolated. Um, and, you know, as I continued to do that, you know, she, she opened up more and more, started telling, telling some jokes, you know, being more natural, um, and becoming more and more available, you know, telling me how she was feeling, her problems, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you know, as camp ramped up and we got deeper into the experience, I couldn't keep her away from me if I tried, you know, she felt very comfortable around me. Um, you know, she sat with me at lunch every day, all that sort of stuff. She, she felt like she was, um, like she was in a place where she was heard and that she was cared about. And for me, uh, that meant a lot, um, that I could do something for someone like that. Um, and I, I ha I've had a numer numerous examples of this, like with, with other campers throughout camp, um, so that little Shireen story is a shining example of, um, my development of the ability to, um, resonate with people who are very different than myself. And I think that that's key in all walks of life. Once again, you know, if you can, if you can make a, 
um, you know, a seven year old, for example, um, you know, feel comfortable and, you know, kind of be buddy buddy with them and make them smile and laugh and all that stuff, even though you're at two completely different stages of your life. Um, you know, then there's no, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that with a 47 year old or a 67 year old or whoever it is, you know, people who come from any walk of life. Um, so those relationships that I was able to build at camp really, uh, built my confidence and in my ability to connect with all people. Um, because there's no reason on paper, um, that, you know, Shireen and I should be, you know, as close as we were. Um, but that's, that ended up being how it went down. And I, I'm really grateful for, for her, for showing me that, um, you know, things like that are, are really possible. And it's about the person who um, is trying to cultivate that relationship and how you treat them and how comfortable you're able to make them feel in their own skin. Yeah, and it's <clears throat> amazing to, to see the different relationships a lot of you guys had with different kids that kind of emerge. And a lot of times, like you said, the, the people you least expect, right? Right. Um, and that's what's so rewarding about it. Right. And, uh, and, and Jack, I was going to ask too. So obviously we know, you know, you've got a huge passion for basketball and two of your goals coming into the summer were to get better at basketball and improve your entrepreneurial skills. And, you know, one of the highlights for me for the summer for you guys was orchestrating a game where it was you guys plus a few of our grit camp counselors against, um, uh, a team of all former collegiate athletes, two of them played European ball. One of them was a two-time national champion at University of Florida. Uh, but tell us about kind of your personal journey in terms of, you know, some of the mental and physical challenges you, you know, went through to get to that point. Yeah, so when you take the time to develop the big three, you know, mentally, physically, and emotionally, um, when you put time and effort into making each of those aspects better, um, it's 100% going to help you out on the basketball court. And I can say that that has held true for me. I, I think that the, the person who walked in in early May to right now, um, you know, the, the basketball abilities are night and day in terms of my mental confidence. Um, my my strength and conditioning when I'm out there, all that sort of stuff has really improved um, in part to what um, we've done over here at Great University. And um, that game that Brian had mentioned, which is on YouTube, by the way, be sure to check it out. The highlights are exquisitely done. Um, it's just a great looking tape right there. It makes us all look great. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was actually really kicking myself after that game um, because I felt that I was really gun shy and I didn't play to the best of my abilities but it wasn't anything physical. Um, you know, I, I had put in the same amount of work as, you know, my fellow interns. I, I wasn't super gassed. You know, I, I had a lot more to give, but there was something in my mind that just kept me from going full force from shooting, you know, the shots that I shoot at camp or the shots that I shoot in the mornings, you know, all that sort of stuff. I just felt really shy and nervous. And I realized that it's all in my head. So um, I had made the physical jump from a basketball perspective at that time where I had the ability to shoot, you know, from anywhere on the court and had the confidence to do so as well. But mentally, I just I was apprehensive because of the level of the competition, because of how good these guys were and how big they were. Um, and it was an environment that I hadn't really been thrown into yet this summer. Um, so that 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 game was also an awesome, awesome experience. It was great to play alongside those guys and um, match up with with them. Um, but it, it really did show me that, you know, there's, there's mental growth to be had as well. You know, a, a complete player needs a lot of different elements going for them. And, uh, you know, even though I've gotten my body better and, um, you know, focused on my emotions and all that sort of stuff, you still have to keep your mind sharp and fee, uh, free of fear. That's tough to say. Free of fear. Um, because, like I said, you know, fear is, is typically an inhibitor. And I, I was very inhibited by it um, during that that basketball game at Bulls, which was still a blast, by the way, not, not knocking the experience. It was a terrific time. Uh, but all my problems were, were self-made. Um, but yeah, I, I, I need to take the time to thank Brian for setting that up. Cause that was a really cool thing. I'm sure we can all agree on that. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure that we'll have a whole new game to bring on a rematch next year. They're, they're definitely not going to be ready for what we bring uh, come 2023. No, they will not be. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, but, Kevin, coming over to you, as mentioned, you spent the last two years playing football at Stetson University. I mean, that basically tacked on about 12 years of your football career. Uh, but this year, you decided to hang up the cleats to pursue other opportunities, and that really started with Grit University this summer. So... Just to really give us an insight into kind of where you're at and, and your experience through what you, you've gone through through playing and deciding to now move on to better or new things, shall I say, 
what really led you to making that decision and what vision do you have for yourself as you enter this new chapter of your life? Um, what led me into making that decision was, was for the first time focusing on myself and not my purpose, not the team, not the mission, not winning games. Um, first day of fall camp last year, I was about 296 pounds. Um, I wouldn't say I was out of shape, but you know, I'm a heavy sweater. I'm a big guy and I cramped up full body cramp, called the ambulance, went to the hospital. They put three liters of fluids into me. And it was at that time when, you know, I started to question what I wanted. What, what do I want? What do I want to do? Um, football is all I know right now. There's something, there's something more for me. It felt like there was something more. And I felt like at the time I was prioritizing things that weren't healthy for me. I was overweight. I was in a bad mental place because of my struggles with, with cramping and, you know, medical issues, N nothing, no injuries, but just like, it's, it's very morally defeating when, you know, I, I would cramp up and then I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I'm eating all the right things. I'm, you know, I'm over hydrating. I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything you, you could think of. And it's just, it's just not working. Um, so I decided to, to, to walk away, started losing weight by the end of the fall season. I was around 275. So that's 20 pounds over a season, which is pretty normal for linemen. Um, then into winter, come to winter weigh-ins, 264. Then by the end of winter, the lowest I'd been on our weekly weigh-ins was 256. And then I start spring and I'm just like, you know, I made a commitment to my teammates that I would, I would do this. Like I'm, I'm ready to walk away, but I will follow through with what I say I will do. I will be here for the spring. I played every single practice for spring. Um, you know, finished spring around 260. And then we had about a month and a half, two months before school ended. And, you know, got, got with you guys about doing an internship and there was conflicting times. And, you know, by the time we got to exit interviews, I was like, here's what's going on with me, coach. I want to thank you for everything you've done, but this is what I want to do. And so I hung it up. And for those last two months, I got down to the lowest I got was 250. And right now I'm sitting at around 245. But, um, you know, I, I prioritized myself for the first time. And it felt good. It felt like there was so much more opportunity out there for me. So my vision for the coming year and the coming years is to build more relationships, live by the, the three things men built for others and expand my knowledge horizon. There's so many things that I felt like I missed out on because I was so committed to one thing, whether that go back to high school and me not playing high school basketball because I was so in love with football, um, so committed to football that I felt like it would be troublesome or take away from that. So now I'm at a time in my life where it's time to take away from football and move on and expand you know, expand on the things I want to learn and the things I want to want to do one day. So, and visit Florida State. Yes, and well. visit Florida something State. Something else that football didn't allow. Oh so. no! Well, I actually, cool thing about that, I got to visit a lot of places. I went to New York for the first time um, when we played Marist. Um, you know, I went to Jersey for Princeton. We we fly into Laguardia, and and you just see this landscape, and it's it's really a concrete jungle. You fly in. The first thing you see is the Statue of Liberty, and then you see the whole city and Freedom Tower and the Empire State Building, and oh my God, it was it was a spectacle. You know, just sitting from the plane window and, and looking at it, oh my gosh, couldn't be. I, I, I had a lot of great experiences for football, but it was it was time for me to to expand on new things. Mm. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys. Here we are. We're at the end of your ten weeks. The last day of camp was last Friday. Uh, you know, we're shooting the podcast today. Uh, tomorrow, we've got our uh, counselor appreciation, which we're playing top golf with them. And then tomorrow night, we've got a big banquet for you guys and your family to celebrate your summer and get your profit sharing check. And uh, and then Wednesday, we wrap up. We were actually asked to uh, make a presentation in front of the mayor's committee on health and wellness. So 
I feel like that's kind of our big final exam, our dissertation of the summer is, you know, we've got 30 minutes in front of, um, you know, some people to kind of explain what it is we do. But uh, so, but I wanted to ask you guys, looking back over the course of the summer, you know, did you have a favorite part? What was the most challenging? What, you know, what would you say in reflection at this point after 10 weeks of the summer? Well, I think, uh, I think I'll save the favorite part for after, but I, I'm going to start with my biggest challenge, if that's okay. Um, I, I, I had experience working at summer camps and with children before, so the, the summer camp part came pretty naturally to me. Um, so I would say that the biggest issue I had was the mornings. I was very entrenched in a sleep schedule, um, and changing that sleep schedule was, was one of the hardest parts. Um, but then couple that, couple with having to change your sleeping pattern to, you know, getting up in the morning and the first thing you do is you hit the gym, you know, as hard as you can. I was not used to that. Um, so it was definitely hard. I, uh, I wasn't super comfortable around weights since I, I really hadn't been crazy into weights since high school. I, I went to the gym at FSU and stuff, but, um, truth be told, I played a lot more basketball there than, than lifting. Um, but now I can safely say that great university has rekindled my love for the, for the weights part of the gym. I really like it. Um, I've seen improvements in my mood, my self-confidence, obviously my, my basketball game that we talked about earlier. Um, and those are all direct results from keeping my body moving and, um, really pushing my limits every morning, you know, for these 10 weeks, um, that I've done, uh, that we've done, I'm sorry. Um, my parents have signed me up for a gym in North Carolina, which is where I'm headed uh, to finish out the summer um, and relax a little bit. So um, I can safely say that I will be keeping up the uh, the physical aspect of the great university curriculum. Um, so that that's definitely cool. In terms of uh, the, the best parts of the summer, um, I would have to say the coastal one pitch, which if you ask me, I would have. I would have called you crazy if you told me that that's what I was going to say, but that, that was such a unique thing where it was like, you know, we're, we're walking down this long corridor to this conference room and like, I'm close to the most nervous I've ever been in my life. Like just <laughs> pondering, you know, what's the worst possible outcome? You know, if we uh, completely fail, what happens? You're like, just trying to ease myself a little bit. Um, but then by the time, you know, we were done with it, I felt so accomplished and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, it was just terrific. I would also say that, um, my favorite parts have been um, sort of the changes I've seen in, in my body and stuff um, and my, my self-confidence and all that sort of stuff, um, which is all a direct result of what we've done all summer. So um, that's great as well. So getting to spend time with, with Kevin has been a terrific part because, um, you know, like he's been committed to football for the last two years. So there's really been no uh, visiting each other while we're at school um, sort of stuff. So getting to spend 10 straight weeks with him. Um, going through what we've gone through, but also spending uh, time like just hanging out like um, like we used to in high school has been has been awesome as well. There's been a lot of benefits. I could probably go on for another ten minutes if you let me, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it over because I'm sure Kevin has some good stuff to say as well. I'm sure he's ex experienced a lot of positives. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I have a lot of favorite moments. It's hard for me to pick. You know, when we were running through the podcast earlier, probably said something different. But what came to mind right now is going to your house every Thursday to have dinner. What yeah. a treat. <laughs> what best. a treat. The oh. best. It, I mean, it's just, I don't know if you planned for it, but it really feels like family when you come over to the Harbin's house. Like, you come there, and it's just, there's not a there's not a beat skipped. Um, and I, I think that's what I appreciated about this internship so much. It didn't feel like a job. Like, yeah, we get paid. We're, we're here to make profit. But it didn't feel like a job. It just felt like, Oh, this summer I'm just running a summer camp with my family, my grit family, you know, but the most challenging part, once again, going to touch on it, being thrown into the fire, you know, and, and it set us up for a great summer, but just like the nerves and the, the probably being at my most uncomfortable being thrown into the fire. But yeah, I just want to commend you for how you have this set up. It's, it really feels like, like family. And you and you, you take care of us. So I I appreciate that. Yeah, I definitely couldn't agree more. And of course, Jen, Brian's wife, uh, this would not be possible without her. I mean, I say all the time, grit camp is not possible without what we refer to as the camp mom. But she's also our grit university mom. She's got three of her own boys at home. Whether it's the kids kicking, screaming, crying, fighting over who gets the iPad, or the four of us trying to, you know draw up what we're going to do for camp the next week. I mean, it's a madhouse, but she carries it better than all of us. Uh, so Jen, I know she'll be listening, but, uh, 
you and her really do an amazing job at that. So she's a super mom. That's absolutely. all we gotta say. Yeah. Shout, shout, shout out mom. iPad kids. Shout the out iPad, iPad kids. kids. Yeah, I think honestly it's a little refreshing <laughs> on Thursdays to kind of like get out of camp and still be around the kids because yeah. it it kind of reminds me that it's any problems we're facing they're not as deep as they might seem. Yeah. You know, we were all once those kids that were just living for another twenty four hours. You know, one more day, uh, <laughs> and I think that kind of keeps me level headed at the end of every week. But knowing everything you guys now know about Green University, you've been through so much from these last minute pitches to playing basketball and working out at 6 a.m. and dealing with the kids and making friendships with the counselors while also trying to keep them on their toes and doing what they need to do. It's been an insane summer with a lot of positives, very few negatives, if I had to say, if any. Um, but what advice would you have for anyone coming into the program for the years to come? Control the controllables. Attitude and effort. I can't control you know, what the weather is. I can't control how the kids are going to behave. I can't control a lot of the things in, in my day, but I can control my attitude and my effort. And those things go in tandem. If you have a bad attitude, your subconsciously effort is going to be lower. If you have a good attitude, you're going to be more willing to give a hundred percent effort and just, you know, giving that day in and day out. And just, I mean, it's part of the grit creed. I will accept the things I cannot change, have the courage to change the things I can. Um, you know, that really, that, that's really got to be your mindset going into it. All completely uh, valid points, and I would agree with every single one of them. Um, if I'd like to, if I could add, I would say um, managing fear is a big thing because, you know, a new situation, um, a new method of living, um, you know, just different circumstances than you're used to um, in high school or whatever it is. Um, there's going to be an element of fear and fear only serves to hinder in a situation like the one that we're in. Um, because, you know, like my dad used to say when I would, when I would sort of get riled up, he would say that, you know, there's people laying down their lives across the world right now and they are experiencing real fear. You know, this is all societal. This is all safe. This is all stuff for our benefit. So that fear is misplaced. And what it will do is it will get in the way of the goal that you want to accomplish and you won't even know that that's what it's doing because you'll just feel the fear. Um, so that's something that um, I really didn't have that much of an issue with, with after the first week, thank God. But, um, you know, if you let it, it it'll take control of, of everything that you're trying to do. Um, you know, if, I, if, I, if we had let fear overcome our emotions in the Coastal One pitch, we would have been kicking ourselves and it would have been a completely different experience. So by that point, we had vanquished that sort of element um, of everything, but it's really, it's really important to keep that out of your head when you're first starting something like Great University. Another thing that's, that's pretty key is uh, you have to embrace uh, the people who you're in it with. For, uh, for me, it was easy because it's, uh, it was a friend and a friend of a friend who is now a friend. I'm sorry, I just said the word friend like five times. Um, but embracing the people who you are going through and experience with will always make it better. You know, don't try to isolate yourself from people who you may not know. Um, you know, Colby may come off as this, this tough megalomaniacal ruler when we first get there, you know, barking orders and telling us what to do, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, just, just know that he has your best interest at heart when you're, when you're going through this grit thing, because he's been through it, you know, more times than, than anybody else on the planet. So, um, <laughs> so just, just say it. Don't so, forget, um, the dishes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, those are the two key things I would say embrace like sort of the brotherhood aspect that great university brings about and then just sort of limit the, the fear that you feel. Um, to the best of your ability, obviously. And I think that's great. And uh, one thing I've loved about getting to do this today is your, the, the way that you guys perceived a lot of the things we've done, I think is exactly as, as we would have always envisioned it, as Brian envisioned it for me. And now as I wanted to see it kind of come into fruition for you guys. And it's been n nothing short of amazing to recap the summer over the last week or so and talk about the podcast and the stories you want to share and the experiences you guys had so now talking about the future, you know, obviously, Jack, you'll return to Florida State University in the fall, Kevin back to Stetson with all this newfound experience and habits and mindset changes. What do you guys see coming next or, or what plans do you have lined up for your futures? Yeah, I'm, thank you for your interest. Um, this is this next year is going to be a crazy one. I'm currently enrolled in a full course load at FSU, obviously, um, but I'm looking forward to another year of, of college life. And this this year is going to mark the the first COVID free year in all aspects of things. Um, I don't have any online courses. 
Um, you know, every building is open. They just opened a brand new student center at Florida State. Um, there's going to be a lot more people on campus, a lot more faces, a lot more connections to meet. Um, relationships like Kevin was talking about, you know, those are going to be um, a lot more um, present and there's going to be a lot more of them too, which is always good. Um, you know, I plan on playing a lot of basketball. I'm going to continuously, you know, work out in the Grit University way. Um, you know, I'll probably have my grit bottle with me too, you know, for, for hydration, all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't, I'm just really looking forward to being on FSU's beautiful campus for a whole year, um, with no hindrances, um, which is something that I haven't really had to gotten to experience yet. Um, I'm probably going to get a part-time job as well, depending on, you know, when my classes are scheduled and all that sort of stuff. If I can swing it, I definitely want to make that happen. Um, and I think, uh, one other thing that I should add is that um, this really, this great university has really helped me with my self-confidence and my uh, belief in myself to do almost anything that I really set my mind to, and that's going to really help me when I'm back on campus, um, just in terms of being more outgoing, being more caring um, for others, all that sort of stuff. Um, because if you can deal with, you know, 30 kids running around a field, uh, there's not much you can't do on, on a college campus, so... Hmm. Yeah, and for, for me, looking at the future, you know, full course load, but I'm really excited for this is going to be the first semester of all in-person classes. You know, no hindrances, no policies at school about wearing masks or how many people can be in a room, no limitations. And it's, and it's really exciting because, you know, getting back to that, like, normalcy that's been missing for the last two years of our lives... Um, you know, I'll be getting uh, an on-campus job, a work study. Um, also diving into my psychology minor, taking developmental psychology. Um, but I mean, I just couldn't be more excited for the for the challenges ahead, and just staying on my path of growth is really exciting for me. Hmm. Yeah, I love all that, especially being all of us three 2020 graduates. We've experienced COVID life for what seems like forever now. Uh, so it makes me excited for you guys to, to be able to do that, Kevin, finishing up football with a world of opportunity at your fingertips. And Jack, like you said, just a, almost a, stepping into a new version of yourself. So just uh, obviously I have a few things I, of course, want to say about you guys, but I think it, it'd be definitely worth it to kind of yeah. take a standpoint for you, Brian. Uh, definitely have a, just a question for you. For the three of us sitting in front of you as a vision that this has really been for so long, I feel like this summer – has been the best just because we had so many things lined up. It, it was almost a perfected situation, and I think we smashed it out of the park. So just to kind of give a little high praise for these guys before we let them go after this summer, uh, you know, what has it been like to, to witness all the changes from for me and Jack and Kevin and to recap just this amazing summer it's been at Great University? Yeah, and, I, you know, we came in today, and I didn't want to rehearse anything with you guys beforehand because I wanted to hear all your answers for the first time. And and it really is um, <clears throat> it's very rewarding to see you guys in really just even 10 short weeks, you know, start off with a goal of becoming a better person. And, you know, the first thing you guys did was take a personality assessment to figure out how you kind of see the world. And and how you guys started to figure out to work together and, and work with, you know, these other senior counselors and junior counselors and all the different personalities of the 318 kids that came through camp and, um, you know, the physical challenges, the lack of sleep and um, at times and, and really pushing yourself. So I'm just really, really proud to see that you guys are happier and healthier and and, um, you know, the only thing that I ever ask, you know, of people that come through Grit University is pass it on. You know, whether you work with us again or work with us, you know, for 10 years or don't work with us again, just pass on these principles, you know, really protect all the things that you've learned make them a part of your life and pass them on as many people as you can. And, and for me, that's kind of been what's made me happy, um, and fulfilled in all the things that I do. And, and, um, and it really is, you know, life and it's amazing journey. I think so many people have goals that are destinations. And once they reach that destination, they don't know what to do, what's next. But if you really embrace life for the journey, 
then it's not really about the destination. Sure, you have goals that are maybe benchmarks along the way that you want to see happen, but it really becomes about you know, how you get there and the people that are with you. So for all the things that you guys are saying that you learned this summer, then I know that this summer was a success if that's y'all's takeaway. So yeah, I mean, I'm a proud papa in a lot of ways. And so I, you know, really appreciate you guys and, and thank you for letting me be part of the journey. I mean, you know, I learn as much from you guys and, you know, I feel like, um, you know, the examples that you guys are setting for my three boys, um, is phenomenal. And, um, you know, they're part of that trickle down. So I very much appreciate you guys providing that for my family as well. Yeah. I just want to say, um, to that end that, um, you know, everything that Brian did for us all summer was, was very on theme of, um, you know, this is, this is a way that, that, um, if everybody lived this way, the world would be a better place. And I think that by doing our best to spread, um, you know, some of these, some of these principles that, um, are available online for anyone who wanted to look at it. Um, it can really make everybody's lives better. And I think that, uh, Kevin and I, again, we, we have very different, um, you know, day to day lives and sort of what we're going through, um, day in and day out. And they helped us both equally. So, 100%. so with that, you know, being said, I think that it's safe to say that it would help anyone to a degree, um, to try to adopt some of these principles. It doesn't have to be all if you can't, you know, do that. Um, but I think that um, Brian has done a great job of laying groundwork um, for anybody and everybody, not just the three of us and not just the campers at camp, you know. Um, so the, the universal aspect of, of what you have going is, is really cool. Um, and uh, I just, I want to thank you for, for sharing that with us and letting Kevin and I be, um, you know, two of the first people to really... Um, uh, give it give it a, a full test run for a whole you know summer and I think that um, I'm pleased with the results Kevin's definitely pleased with the results so um, it's just great and I think that um, I hope you, you keep doing what you're doing it's really special Kevin any side notes man I'm just excited for next summer I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just thinking about what's it gonna be like what's what are we gonna do next what's next that's all I can think about is what's next so yeah, I mean, that's the ground, ground running for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I totally agree. And I think what's been coolest for me is to take the opportunity to share this. I mean, Brian did exactly what you guys have experienced for me and it, it changed everything in my life. And that's why I've been felt so lucky to be a part of it. Uh, but not only just as another great university intern, but to now share it with you guys has been pretty next level for me uh, in so many ways, like not only to help develop you guys from an entrepreneurial standpoint and help you guys with the sales stuff and um, introduce you to some of the marketing stuff or editing the videos. Personal touch is something that I say I've learned here that is something you'll never learn in a classroom. And, and frankly, from very few CEOs and business owners in the first place is that personal touch. And I think you guys grasp that so well. Um, but you taught me so much of about the camaraderie and things like that. Again, always been a little bit more independent, especially with things that were like this, where I've always just thought, you know, hey man, I, I can handle it. I'm gonna get done how I wanna do it. And cause I feel like I know what's best. And you guys totally opened me up to, I don't necessarily have to hold that power, but I don't hold that power. Like you guys added so much value um, to what we do here. And I really could not be more impressed with, uh, with what we've done here because I, have said it, Brian says it all the time, we're definitely changing the world with what we do. Just like you said, Jack, if everyone adopted this, then the world would be a better place. And I think adding you guys to our farm team has been one of the best decisions we've made. I think that um, one other thing um, is that Brian made Kevin and I feel like a valued member of the team from the jump. And that really made it a lot easier for us to buy into everything that you know he and Colby uh, had already built because we felt like we were a part of it just as much as they were. And that might not have been the case at that time, but um, I think that that really eased the transition and made me feel like what I was doing this summer mattered because I have a say in some decision making. I can help, you know, make this more efficient, better. You know, I can provide suggestions. I can, you know, run drills that I think will help the kids grow, all that sort of stuff. So that trust that you have in, you know, your two new interns, um, obviously you trust Colby like that because it's been, you know, a couple of years at this point, but, um, having that new trust for, for people who just walk in the door is something that not a lot of places can say that they do for the people who've joined their, uh, 
their project. So that was really cool for me as well. Yeah, I can't really say the title fits the description. <laughs> U- Grit University intern is definitely not the word for it. <laughs> We, we are, this is a partnership. And Associate. You, yeah. I mean, you, you really feel, you really don't, I don't feel like an employee. I feel like, like Grit Camp 2022 is my, is my baby, my product. Like I, I put work into it. We all put work into it. And, you know, we, we, we put out a lot of good things this summer and you never, never made me once feel, any of you never made me once feel like I was beneath you. We were on equal playing field. And, um, you know, anything that I said or did would be considered. And that's, that's what I feel like is missing from a lot of um, work culture environments is there's like this pyramid scheme or a power scheme where, you know, even, even the janitor's voice should matter. Like if he thinks, you know, hey, we need to fix this or that. And then it, that gets blown off by, you know, upper management. It's just not the way that I would want to do things when I'm in your position. I would definitely, I definitely accommodate you for leading by example because you've set a good example of what we want in the future. Yeah, we've definitely got lucky, you know, with our, whoever you want to call it, our Coach K or uh, our Master Ugwe over Popovich. here, whatever it might be, Yoda. You know, we've gotten <laughs> a, a very lucky spread with our leader here uh, between him and Jen. So, all in all, been an incredible summer, guys. I, I could not I could not complain one bit about it. And of course, one final question for you both, something we ask all of our guests, something we talk about nonstop, obviously within our Grit Creed. What part of the Grit Creed resonates most with you both and why? Yeah, for me, it's the last one. I will lead by example because my purpose is larger than me. And, you know, Figuring out my purpose is something that I tried to work on. And, you know, as we're sitting here writing up these answers for the the podcast, writing up what we what ideas we want to express, it, it really came to me. It's like it's I want to lead by example in showing athletes that they can transition to the business world. There is a transition. These principles you learn as an athlete in any sport the discipline, the hard work, the teamwork, the accountability, it translates. And, you know, a lot of athletes struggle with putting that, putting that sports mindset into something else. They think a lot of athletes feel like the end of sports is the end of their life. And that's just not the case. And it's something I struggled with mentally. Like all I've ever known is football. Like what, what's next? I'm, I'm terrified. What's next? What am I going to do when I'm what am I going to do when I'm not when I don't have the shoulder pot shoulder pads on anymore? And so I think that's that's going to be my purpose and is figuring out how I can, you know, put forth the access to transition, the knowledge to know how to transition, and you know just you know telling you know showing athletes that you know it's okay to walk away for yourself. It's okay for that chapter of your life to end because there's so much more out there for you and like exploring that and learning how to use your skills for, you know, the business world is something that I really could see myself doing. Yeah. I'm going to have to go a different direction. Um, not that all of that wasn't great because I completely agree with all of it. We need to stave off that sort of Delonte West, you know, what do I do when sports are done type of problem. Um, but for me, I, uh, I took a lot of value. Uh, my favorite passes changed throughout the summer. Um, it was really hard for me to pin one down. Um, but I think by the end it would have to be, I will follow through with what I say I will do. Um, because I feel that this is universal, uh, like we were talking about. Um, I think that it can serve anybody to become a better friend, coworker, significant other, athlete, any, any person in any function of life um, will benefit from being honest in their promises and what they, what they say that they will do. <laughs> um, I, I think I've sort of succumbed to the empty promise syndrome a little bit where, you know, at previous times in life, you know, you say, Oh, you know, I'll, yeah, sure. I'll help you out on Wednesday. And then you forget about it. Or, you know, you come up with an excuse really late or, you know, all that sort of stuff. And people remember that. Um, it's a really big turnoff, um, when you're trying to make new friends, um, and you, you know, promise them something or, um, you know, to do something for them or anything like that. And then you blow it off. Um, it sort of disrespects their trust and their time. 
um, because you know they trusted you to do something that that you didn't do. So I think that the universal nature of this, whether you're an athlete or just a worker or in an office, anything like that, um, you need people need to trust your word or else it loses all of its value. Um, so that's something that that, that this camp. Um, you know, taught me when I when I said that I was going to give you know ten weeks of full concentrated effort to Grit University, I followed through and I did it, and so did Kevin. So, um, you know, that's a capital letter example right there of us following through with uh, with promises that we've made, and uh, I think that sort of shaving all of empty all of the empty promises out of your life um, will serve as to benefit um, anybody. So um, that's a big one for me, and it's something that. Um, I'm going to be very obnoxious with my family about, um, you know, hey, you said you follow, you said, you know, you would do this. You said you'd buy me these shoes. You know, you got to follow through with what you say you will do. So, um, it's even got, <laughs> it's even got that type of use. You can really oh, use it okay. anywhere. It's, it's just, it's a perfect line. So that's why I went with it. It's also very short, sweet and to the point, And I love that. So, um, that's, uh, that's my, my premium passage of the Greek creed for sure. Hmm. Well, guys, it's been amazing to sit down here and, and recap the summer and let me just finish by saying congratulations on finishing your freshman year of great university we would love to have you Bro. back if not guys i think it's safe to say whatever you learned here is going to go with you for the rest of your life and you guys are going to go on to do incredible things post-college within your own families and who knows maybe one day you'll be on the other end of this stake educating the next generation so Thank you to our listeners as well. That's a wrap here today at the Grit.org podcast. Please check out our other episodes. Leave us a comment. Tell us something you enjoyed about Jack and Kevin's story. Share with it, Share this with someone you think it would resonate with or impact. And as always, we appreciate you tuning in for another episode of the Grit.org podcast. Thank you.